Hi, uh, today we will be looking at two of the most popular tablets in the market. Uh, on the left is the Apple iPad and on the right is the Samsung Galaxy Tab, uh, which is currently running uh, on Android 2.2, that's Froyo. So, uh, uh, let's begin by comparing the looks and the dimensions of both tablets. Uh, as you can see, the Galaxy Tab is relatively smaller than the iPad. Also, it is a little bit thicker. But uh, as you can see out here, it is definitely thicker than the iPad. But the iPad does have this uh, bulge which comes into play in the middle of the tablet, whereas uh, the Galaxy Tab all around is about has the same dimensions. Now uh, let's look at the ports which are available on the Galaxy Tab. Uh, on the right side of the tab, you have the power off or uh, the key lock button. You have the volume rocker. You have the micro SD slot and you have the SIM slot. Uh, out here you have a proprietary port which is kind of disappointing because we were expecting it to have a micro USB or uh, a mini USB port but of course the iPad also runs with its own uh, proprietary port out here are two speakers these are the only uh, all the, these are stereo speakers these are the only two speaker ports that you'll find on the tablet which is again a little unfortunate because the uh, when when we play music off the tab it does sound that it's the sound like it's just coming from one side which, which it is and it doesn't sound very balanced uh, on the left side of the tab, uh, there's basically nothing except for a mic port, and uh, out here, it's, there's just a 3.5mm jack. Okay, moving on to the uh, iPad, uh, if you've seen our earlier video of uh, our comparison with uh, the Olive Pad, you already know what all ports the iPad has. Out here, we have the speaker grill, this is the proprietary port. Um, out here, we have the volume rocker, this is the hold button. Uh, this is a 3.5 mm jack, uh, this is the power off key lock button and basically that's about it. Uh, now if we compare the build quality between the two, the front of uh, both tablets is obviously glass, the glass screens are there and it's pretty solid. Even the uh, Galaxy Tab has a very solid build but of course uh, the iPad is made up of uh, aluminum or at least I hope this is aluminum and it's got uh, spots of plastic uh, behind. The Galaxy Tab is completely made of plastic, uh, as you can see. But uh, fortunately, uh, there is there are no creaky parts or you know no moving parts, and it's and it's very solidly built. So I guess uh, overall, if you look at it, the Galaxy Tab is does not look probably as good as the iPad. But you have to take into consideration that this is a much smaller device, and it is much more comfortable to use in one hand, whereas the iPad you cannot use in one hand. Uh, the iPad looks better, but this is this the Galaxy Tab definitely has a, a higher portability quotient. Uh, now we'll compare the keyboards on the iPad and the Galaxy Tab. Uh, first, let's look at the Galaxy Tab's keyboard. Uh, in the portrait mode, the Galaxy Tab's keyboard is very usable. You you can type uh, with uh, two thumbs and. Uh, as you can see, the touch response is also uh, very decent. I mean, uh, you, and you also get swipe. You can also install swipe, and that works as well. So it's very easy to type on it. In landscape mode, as you can see, my thumbs cannot meet in the middle of the keyboard, so it, it becomes a little difficult to type with two thumbs, especially on the keys which are in the middle of the keyboard. So essentially, we have to put down the uh, tab and probably type it out like this. Uh, now typing on the iPad is another matter altogether. It is really difficult to type on the iPad with two thumbs first because the device itself is really heavy. So you know you can the the device can get a little imbalanced. You'll probably again need to put it down. However, the moment uh, you start using you know uh, the iPad's keyboard as a regular keyboard, it is quite easy to type on. Uh, in the in the portrait mode especially. Uh, as you can see here, the touch response is phenomenally uh, good. And uh, let's try to do the same in uh, landscape mode. Now, in landscape mode, the keys become bigger and it's much easier to type on again. Unfortunately, unlike the Galaxy Tab, you cannot just uh, use the keyboard as uh, you would use it on a phone, that is, uh, typing with two thumbs, which is a little unfortunate, but obviously with a 10-inch screen, you can't really 
uh, have it always. You have a pretty big screen, so as a result, uh, you need to use the entire screen to uh, use the keyboard too. Uh, now let's look at both tablets as uh, ebook readers. Um, although the iPad comes with its iBook app, out here we are using the Kobo app uh, as its ebook reader. On the Galaxy Tab 2, uh, there is an ebook app which comes pre installed, although out here we are using the Aldico app which can be uh, downloaded for free from uh, the Android market. So, as you can see out here on the iPad first, the screen has a slight pinkish tint, but it's still very readable. This, uh, the screen is very bright and uh, the fonts are very readable. And plus, I mean, you have this animation thing going on and it's very smooth to read. So, the iPad, like as you can see out here, is an excellent choice if you want to read books. Right, the Galaxy Tab also comes with its uh, own ebook reader. It's just called ebook. Uh, that's a pre installed app uh, provided by Samsung. Although out here we are trying the Aldico book reader which is also a really good app and you can download it for free from the Android market. Uh, the Galaxy Tab is a pretty good device for reading ebooks. As you can see out here the fonts are clear. Uh, it's very smooth uh, going through the pages. You can, you can actually read through a book in no time provided you are a fast reader. Uh, however, when I compare it with the iPads, uh, with the iPad, the thing is that uh, the screen seems to be a little bit uh, dimmer and it's got this slightly yellow tint. Yes, the iPad also had its uh, had a pink tint but I found uh, reading a book on the iPad to be better but of course if you're traveling somewhere, you are in a bus, you won't be able to read a book on the iPad because it's really that big. Whereas uh, the Galaxy Tab, like I said earlier, is, is a smaller device and you can just hold it in one hand and you know read your favorite book like that. Uh, now let's compare the browsing experiences on uh, both browsers. Uh, as you all know, the iPad uses uh, the Safari browser as its uh, default browser and uh, the Tab has uh, the Android 2.2 default browser. So, uh, as you can see out here, uh, when completely zoomed out, uh, the web pages on the 10 inch screen of the iPad are still uh, readable while uh, they aren't all that readable on the uh, Galaxy Tab's 7 inch display. Uh, also, uh, you uh, browsing a web page or just you know uh, zooming in, zooming out, or just uh, panning through different places on the page on the iPad's browser is very easy. It's very smooth and it's uh, uh, it's been optimized for touch. You can say that. However, on the Galaxy Tab, the browsing does become a touch uh, unwieldy. Zooming in and zooming out is still fine, but as you can see out here, scrolling through the page does seem a little laggy. Plus, it takes its, it takes a little bit of more time, especially if there is a, a flash content that's loading on the page. Yes, the uh, Froyo 2.2 default browser does support flash, and that's a great, great thing. But uh, uh, and the iPad's browser doesn't. However, the presence of flash also takes a big uh, takes a big chunk out of the performance of uh, the Android browser. As a result, you can see that uh, the browser is slightly laggy. It might, it's not as uh, optimized for touch as uh, the iPad's browser is. However, overall, if you're looking to uh, browse the web on the Galaxy Tab, it's a pretty good deal. Obviously, it's just not as good as uh, the browsing experience on the iPad. Right, now finally let's look at a magazine reading app on uh, both the Galaxy Tab and the iPad. The Galaxy Tab, uh, the Galaxy Tab uses uh, Xenio as its uh, default magazine reader. Of course there is also the Kobo book reader which allows you to buy books and then there is uh, the press display news widget which allows you to uh, download uh, newspapers from different parts of the world. So if you look at the magazine reader, uh, in the Galaxy Tab's case, the Xenio reader, Right, so out here as you can see, there are plenty of uh, free magazines available which you can uh, download uh, on the fly. Uh, if you want to buy any uh, magazines, you go to their uh, catalog which you can uh, further, you can, you can search for magazines based on 
the categories on when they arrived or if they are the best sellers or not so out here as you can see got plenty of uh, categories uh, for let's look at sports magazines which are available so here we have let's look at uh, let's say soccer magazines and while it's loading let's take a look at uh, the iPad uh, these are the magazines that we have purchased so as you can see uh, if you look at the India Today app which is there it's extremely easy to read and uh, the catalog is updated quite frequently so if you if you are a heavy magazine reader you have access to all of the popular magazines not just from India but across the world the iPad uh, but of course the more important part to talk about is uh, the readability the, the readability factor and as you saw in the ebooks and uh, on the browser the iPad is much much easier to use the, it seems to be more optimized for touch you can zoom in uh, you can zoom in zoom out without any issues and uh, it also generally tends to look uh, good so of course uh, uh, a lot of it can be attributed to the fact that it's got a large 10 inch screen whereas uh, the Galaxy Tab just has a 7 inch display but still overall uh, the iPad does appear to be more optimized does appear to be uh, easier to use and is easier to use and is obviously better to look at so to conclude uh, let's see the Galaxy Tab is a more portable device it's smaller it's got some pretty cool features for example you can make calls with it you can put in your sim and you can uh, obviously <coughs> Uh, take photos with it, it's got a front camera, it's got a back camera, all of that. But overall if you look at uh, in terms of usability and uh, the way it's been optimized, uh, the iPad still emerges as a better tablet to use.